Hey y'all, it's Henry Couch here. In this tight TSA video, we're gonna be going over data science workflows with our studio. So I saw a comment asking me to do a brief overview of you know using our studio and just the general data science workflow. And I think it's actually kind of a, a common question when you're working with our studio and doing our programming is like, how do we actually organize our files? You know, when we're starting a new project with our studio, like how should we even even approach it? Should we just kind of just write random R scripts or, or what, what should we really do? So I figured I'd kind of show you how I do it. Um, I've never really taken like a formal course on like project management with uh, like data science. I've always just kind of just done it, but here are just some things I kind of have picked up. So generally if I'm starting, you know, a project from scratch, I'll just do a new project. Um, and I'll just do it for a new directory again, new project. And in this case, I'll just call it like new DS project. So we can specify the, the directory um, that we're going to build upon. You can also create a Git repository and you can also use an R environment with this object, with this project. Um, I don't really want to do an R environment uh, with this project because generally I'll just create it after I do all my stuff and I'll kind of just take a snapshot of it instead of having to create a new environment. So I'm just going to do this. Yep. So it's going to pop us into a new session and we can see how we have a new folder says that says new DS project with a new DS project, our project, uh, file. So if I actually open up uh, my file explorer and go to my R work and go to the, uh, new DS project, we can see, we have, uh, our project user file, a new, and then our actual R project file. So generally when I'm creating, um, uh, when I'm starting a new project, I'll actually start creating a few folders. So I'll create a data folder, a scripts folder and a presentation presentation folder. Um, and that that's kind of what I usually do with three folders. Um, sometimes I'll create a models folder if I'm doing a bunch of modeling, but in general, I'll try to try to do data presentation and scripts. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'll put my scripts in the scripts folder. Any like Excel files that I'm going to be using or that I just want to like export to like maybe send it to someone, I'll put in the data folder. You know, also if I have like some RDS files that you know, I, I, where I did a lot of like computation that I, I want to kind of start from there, I'll put it in there. I'll also put some model objects too, and also some SQL scripts too in the, the data folder if I, if I want to. Sometimes I'll, I'll put them in the actual scripts folder, but sometimes I switch up to the data. And then lastly, I think it's always good to think to have to have a presentation folder because like most data science projects, they business people or just like stakeholders in general, they don't really care about your scripts. You know, they, they don't really care about your clean, you know, functions that you wrote. Uh, they want to have some type of like uh, action or decision from your actual analysis or from your project. So it's always good to, you know, keep it more focused towards a presentation and storytelling standpoint. So I always have a presentation folder where I put like rendered markdown documents as like reports that I want to like walk through people, uh, do a walkthrough with people, you know, I'll, I'll write some PowerPoints, I'll, I'll export some plots, um, to put into my PowerPoints and stuff like that. So generally I'll create three folders. And if we look right here, we can see we have our three folders right here. Um, I'll, I'll generally just kind of go into the folders from the files pane. And then I'll just say uh, set as working directory. And we have that. One really useful thing that I find um, that I, I use a lot now since I do way more organized projects is obviously I use the tidyverse, but I also use the here package. And the here package basically finds like the, the R project associated with the project, uh, with the project, uh, you know, the project instance or whatever. And it basically sets that root directory. So, you know, a lot of times when we're trying to like reference a different subfolder, it's kind of a pain to work with, especially in R. But with the here package, if we just call here, it'll always go into our, you know, our sub, our, our main directory or our, our main uh, folder area. And then what we can do is like load it in from uh, using like, so if we're gonna like read in a data frame, so it's like read.csv, we just call here, and then we can also say like data dash like uh, iris.csv. Um, so that way we can kind of say like, hey, I want to use 
because we're in our uh, new DS project, uh, I want to reference the data folder and I'll call, you know, the data folder with the actual file from there. So instead of writing all of this out, uh, we can just call this and it looks a little bit more cleaner and it just works much better than doing like all the tildes and stuff like that um, with the, you know, with all that like um, file notation stuff that gets a little complex. So I generally will use the here uh, 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 function to, to do that. So a lot of times when I'm doing um, DS stuff, data science stuff, I generally do a lot of markdown documents. Um, in this case, I just do a generic um, markdown like that. Um, sometimes I'll do, I'll, I'll change the output. So it'll like render towards like a page thing and stuff like that. Um, so if you want to do like a library, I'll just do it. Tidyverse. And then I, if I want to do like the iris data set or I'm like looking at a data set, I can do, a, I also will do a R markdown, like page table. And that way, oops, I'll just say, uh, I'm going to call this like EDA right there. So in that case, we can actually go through and what I'll, I'll generally do is like, I'll, uh, I'll knit it as an HTML file. Um, so let's see if I'll knit. So it's going to knit and let me, right. So then we have this file right here and we have this page table that we can kind of scroll through when I'm like, you know, running through, uh, when I'm meeting with people and I want to kind of like run through my analysis and kind of get you know, some feedback from it, um, and stuff like that. Um, there's also ways to basically change your, um, your, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, your R markdown files. So you can also have all of these type of things. So you can do presentations outputs. In this case, I sometimes I'll add like a table of contents and stuff like that. Um, but there's, there's a bunch of other things you can do. So table of contents. Uh, and we're that way you can do like a, um, let me do it. So TO, TOC is, uh, was it true? TOC, uh, float was true. And that way you can say like, uh, like data analysis and say like Iris LM Iris. So that, that way we can do like, uh, oops, people dot length data equals iris and then room right so that way we can like knit it oops um uh, what's you'll see html document oh there you go Oh, what that, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's sometimes let me, what's, what's going on. I'll put HTML document. Um, what maybe. Oh, okay. That'll do it. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So you, you kind of have to do some, uh, buffering like that, but you know, sometimes I'll do that where you have a table of contents with your analysis and stuff like that which is pretty easy to share. And so um, additionally, you can, again, I'm going to kind of show like write CSV, the iris, and I'll say here, data iris.csv, right? And we can go into our actual data and see the iris.csv is right there. Um, one other thing that I can also show you guys, oops, uh, our work, new DS project, there is uh some basic commands so again uh with a lot of times you have a lot of code completion so when it highlights that you can press tab and then write that out tab again and you have that um again i don't really use a lot of r scripts that's when i do like more like uh like quote unquote production level stuff where uh, I have to like, I functionalize everything and do that, but let me show you just some tricks with our markdown. Um, so one trick with creating the actual code chunks is control alt I, and that'll basically put that, um, you type in the tidy verse 
and you know if you press control enter it'll do it'll run that that line but if we also run um you know if we do control shift enter it'll run the entire code chunk and then what you can do is um you know you can kind of scroll down and press control alt i again if you do control alt i in it it'll exit out and make another code chunk like that so additionally what we can do is you know if we have a spot that we want to go to or just run the entire script uh you can just run like all chunks below all chunks above stuff like that there's a few things too that are pretty useful with R markdown is that you can actually change the language of the um, of, of the code um, throughout the actual document. So, you know, if I want to write a SQL query, I can write this as SQL, and then I can do my select star from like table, right? And that will return a thousand rows from the actual SQL query just as a preview. And then what you can also do is output dot var is equal to you know df um one thing you have to do is specify the connection so connection equals con con in this case we don't actually have a specific connection so it's something where um you know uh oops i think it's um so it's something where you, you kind of have to um you know actually explicitly say your your um sql connection through a db the dbi or odbc package um so those are just some quick things um again with pipes um control shift m to make your mag like magreter or magis magreter or yeah, yeah the magreter or i don't magreter um package where you just do control shift m and that'll just kind of um type it out for you um with a space so you can easily type in like iris um select you know species and, and do that um to get it out of like when you call a function so like select uh species right obviously you can do the tab and then to get out of those parentheses you can just press you know the right parentheses and you get out of it control shift m you you do a pipe enter i put again um what you want to do and stuff like that so that's a, that's a pretty quick thing. So just some helpful things we can look at uh, when we're doing our our uh, our our coding. You can also look at the environment stuff. So in this case, we can have our files. If we want to like import a file, um, and kind of do a more like uh, uh, user interface, we can just do like import the file. We can name it. We have all these little default configurations, and you can import it right like that. Um, but it, again, I wouldn't do it like that. I would, if, if anything, I would probably just copy this stuff, right? Which I believe you, you can copy like that and then paste it. So that way, you know, if someone were to look at your R Markdown document, they would actually know where you're getting that file, you know, what that file is actually called, stuff like that. Okay. Um, let's see, what else can we do? There are a few things that I've been using a little bit more. So right now I've been doing a some package development just for like internal use. Um, a lot of times what we want to, what I want need to do is basically reference the functions that I'm writing. So a common thing that I've been doing is doing the control dots or control period. And this is the go to file or function. So I can do like iris.csv and kind of go to that file. Or like, if I want to do like go to my EDA R markdown, I can go there and it'll kind of, uh, put me into that area. Okay. Here, out of there. Okay. Um, another thing I guess is is somewhat useful. Actually, let me pull up a our markdown document. Um, our markdown is uh sometimes we want to look at a bunch of plots or a plot that doesn't really fit in our. Uh, Uh, our, uh, you know, our code chunk. So let me just do this. Color is equal to species. Okay. So say we have this plot, um, and we want to kind of like actually zoom in onto it. Um, one thing we can do is just show in a new window. 
Um, again, I, I, I don't always see a lot of people doing it like that. They kind of just view it. So it kind of like auto scales like that. And we can kind of just view it from here and identify um, useful things like that. So yeah, and there's obviously code folding and stuff like that too. Um, additionally, if we look at the, the environment pane, we can kind of look at you know each you know variable. So we have this data frame, it'll give us some of the metadata, some some little examples. Essentially, it's like doing a, I think, what is it? A, a glimpse of iris, right? So it's just doing that. But if we, we can click on it too, and kind of go through the as like, essentially like in a kind of like a table format, uh, you can do a full screen, you can do some filters, show a little distribution of it. Um, you can, I guess, filter, I guess, one to like two, right? You can filter it, stuff like that, and also sort it. Again, I don't really do that too much. Um, I'd rather just code it out. Um, but um, I also think that it's not always, it's, you know, you can never go wrong just viewing the data as a whole because Sometimes you can see weird, on um, like row level index inconsistencies, you know, with like, you know, maybe it's just a period of, of rows were entered in wrong. So that, it's always something you, you can kind of consider looking at. So yeah, um, this is, this was basically a pretty straightforward overview. I think what's really great about our studio just as a whole is that, you know, with R, there's really no other alternatives besides our studio and maybe VS code. And what's really good about our studio is it's you know kind of created by people uh who are you know part of the tidyverse team so i don't think it's like i think it's a very unique thing that this these people offer in the data science community so you know with our studio tidyverse um tidy models like they're all integrated very well together whereas like you're never gonna really think of someone who, like in who writes in python or they have so many, um, uh, uh, so many other things that we can do, like you know, PyCharm, uh, VS Code, Atom, and you know, none of the none of those types of people, or like none of the people on the PyCharm team are like you know developing pandas as well. Um, so I think that's why our studio and our users definitely have an advantage with like the community and like the prod product oriented data science products. Um, so. Um, it's really nice to basically have these types of features in our studio. And what's also great is there's always new add-ins to it. I haven't even gone over jobs, which I don't really use since I use more cron jobs. Um, but it's always something that's pretty useful. And hopefully these, you know, pretty basic, um, ideas from our studio can give some beginners, uh, a start into their own projects. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next week and, uh, tidy on.